if, if you are in the family and there was one person in the family who behaves differently from the rest of the family, will you tell the world that this person represents our family? Perhaps a criminal. Is it how you would portray your family? I was saying to myself, no. In fact, if there was such a person, I will call the police to arrest no matter that person would be a family member. But I would not say this is how our family is because that's how it looked like. We are saying all South Africans are carrying knives, are killing one another. Of course, we look at things differently. I listened to a program this morning. Uh, one person calling from Durban saying people who voted the ANC are idiots and ANC leaders are idiots, all of them. Again, it indicates we look at things from different points. Firstly, if I could speak as the ANC cadre, we lived under very difficult conditions in this country which finally forced us to leave South Africa. Not all of us. Some remained, some went to prison. Some served more decades than one in prison with one objective, to liberate our people, to liberate ourselves. We were prepared to sacrifice the utmost. Others were arrested, tried, convicted for many years, others for life, others to hang, and they did hang. We're fighting for a South Africa that we all were clear what it is all about. But again, we can't say all South Africans did exactly the same. Others were there. But there's always a number of people who determine where things go. We went to other countries. We crossed illegally. You couldn't go to a home affairs and apply for a passport that I'm fighting the government, I want a passport to go. You couldn't. Very few who applied for, what was it called? Was it the exit permit? Who said, I leave the country, I'll never come back. And very few, not many. And they were given once they said that. We came to those countries, walked there without a paper. And perhaps reported ourselves to the police and said, I'm here, I'm running away from South Africa. And at times would be arrested by the police. And as a question, you would explain them, I'm from South Africa. And as soon as you say so, they will understand countries bordering with South Africa. South Africa attack countries suffer. Many countries you can remember whether you're in Lesotho or Swaziland or Botswana or Mozambique or Zimbabwe or Zambia those countries can tell stories when we were in trouble as the black oppressed the majority in the country. They never turned us back. They tolerated us. If anything, they supported our struggle. They did not ask us, why are you not fighting in your own countries and defeat your enemy? Why are you running away? But many of us were not running away. We were going to prepare ourselves to come back and fight. At times they arrested us when we're trying to come back 
with our weapons and everything. And a few countries perhaps did take us to court, but many never. They understood the problem we were in. They sympathized with us. Uh, <clears throat> we did everything. We were, were supported. We worked with ordinary citizens of those countries. Ordinary citizens. They helped us to carry our guns and some luggage across. We sent some of them secretly from their countries to come in here to come risk their lives to come and deliver things that we camouflaged in many ways they took us as their brothers and sisters besides the individual countries besides the specific individuals that we can name were supported by the OAU fully, which means every country in the continent supported us through the OAU. The OAU had what was called the OAU Liberation Committee that focused on the arms struggle in the main to help us get training get weapons, get the money, get everything to liberate ourselves. <clears throat> they called for the release of our leaders and political prisoners. They actually took the struggle as their own. Even today, many who are leaders today will tell you they were conscientized by our struggle. Of course, we got our freedom. And everybody was very happy. We have never forgotten that uh, we fought for a South Africa that must remain friendly to its neighbors and to the world. So what has gone wrong? Why do we think people coming from Africa in particular have suddenly turned to our enemy? Who is spreading that? Now, <clears throat> because I'm speaking in the ANC meeting, not as government, or as head of state. I'm talking as a head of an organization. <clears throat> I led a debate in parliament last week to make a call about this matter and discussed. I must be critical because a number of us who are members of parliament spent time doing things as we do all the time. Personalizing things, criticizing people, finding an opportunity to insult people instead of talking about the issue. That to me indicated the problem we have in the country that our focus has suddenly moved away from really seeing to it that we build a South Africa that is accommodative of all of us and our friends, a South Africa that must play a role of showing how democracy is, of how peace and stability can be achieved, of how to work together with our brothers and sisters. Well, that's what we are all about. Leaving aside that we've got our own challenge, there's no country that does not have its own challenges. No country in the world. No matter how big a country can be, they've got their own challenges, as, as we do. Why do we have this? <clears throat> I believe that we have suddenly changed our attitude as South Africans. Not all of us. And at this point I'll always stress because when people, for an example, 
describe us. They always paint us with one brush as if we are the same. Just like now, when fewer people in terms of our numbers, we are, we are 50 million plus, that have been attacking the foreigners. We are all painted in the same brush as if we are all like them. The picture that I talked about for an example, I don't think those people were, were part of xenophobic, is my thinking. These were sources doing the usual thing to rob people. But because it is happening during this time, it, it portrays us as people who stab people when they've got nothing in their hands. But I'm just saying, making the point here that we therefore, part of the reason I'm saying from government point of view, are going to have this coming together is because we need to isolate those individuals who are bad-mouthing the name of South Africa. Because there are not many. And we must be able to deal with them. Who are making us look bad. But from the leadership point of view, I think there are few things we have not done. Firstly, South Africa had a system called apartheid, which was very violent. For it to be defeated, we as the people had to be violent as well. That culture was not addressed after 1994. We did not sit back and say, our people, we come from this particular period. That time has come to an end. We are beginning a new one. Use it in the churches, use it everywhere to show the people that times have changed. We did it. We took things for granted. Thought that freedom will certainly make all of us be alive. We did not even explain to people, perhaps we might be the more guilty on that one, our struggle. What had it taken for us to reach 1994? What is it that we underwent? Who supported us? In what way? We did not explain it sufficiently so that people understand we came from a very ugly past which we must put behind us. I also think we failed to explain what freedom means. What is freedom? What is democracy? What are the rights? What are the responsibilities? All of us organized in organizations as individuals. That ought to have been forming a larger part of sermons in churches and synagogues to deal with the psychology of all of us that was, in a sense, perturbed or disturbed by apartheid. We did not. And I think we have. Vuni we have we are Suppose we are reaping, we are reaping, we are reaping what we did not even so. We did not attend to what we are supposed to attend to. And therefore, while it's not attending to what we are doing, but we, we had created such a wonderful constitution and we had a wrong belief that a constitution as a document will solve the problems. Big mistake. We keep on telling the people, the constitution does not allow this. We have not explained the constitution itself. You know the oldest book, one of the oldest books called the Bible, Every weekend is explained what is in the Bible for centuries. It can't explain itself. You can sit here. You wouldn't know what is inside. 
we are not we did not have a systematic way of teaching people about our own constitution that's why in Gitina we are vulnerable we did not do what we're supposed to do this is a call I'm going to be making to all stakeholders because because there was a vacuum what occupied the vacuum was a continuous negativity about South Africa. Which in a sense, societally, after 21 years, is beginning to influence people wrongly. Because they don't see the harmony, the responsibility, the leadership from all angles. What they see is people engage in verbal fights continuously. And that from the intelligentsia that speaks too much influences ordinary people. And they can't verbalize it, they then do it in action with knives and everything. And this is what I think we've got to do as a nation, all of us. It's not a responsibility of somebody. It's a responsibility of all of us. We need Baba to compose songs about what I'm talking about. Hmm? Joyous celebration. Huh? Let us compose the songs that talk about what I've said. And I'm pointing at you because you are just in front of me. Whoever is a, is a composer, whatever. Whoever is writing, we ought to be writing about what I'm saying. There ought to be books saying what was the struggle, what is freedom, what is democracy, what our rights, what our responsibilities. Very crucial. We need it to start afresh because this now tells us what we need to do. We need to be united on this one. Totally united as a country to regain the damage that we have just done. Nobody expected that in South Africa we can have this kind of thing. That's why the reaction is so wild in the world. Because they never expected this. In South Africa, everybody, wherever you go, we are an example. We can now portray the opposite example. That in fact we are killers. It can't be. We are not representing us. And I think that must be shown by us, all of us. And that's why I'm happy that uh, you are here representing different sectors. Is one thing we need to deal with whilst dealing with other things that we've been dealing with. Programs everywhere. We must now... Uh, is a <clears throat> yeah, I can see people from uh, TVs. Let us stop calling clever people who come to criticize this country every morning, every day. Let us have people who can educate us on the TVs, more programs that educate us about who we are, what our responsibilities, what is expected of us as each and every citizen of this country. Those who are writing, write about that, not that kind of a picture. I'm not saying you don't need to be, what is the word, frank, honest, but everything has limits, is relative. You can't just say, because I was made by God what I am, then you strip off, you walk on the streets, because we are very being frank about your body, you are being honest about your body. You don't do so. You don't. No, I'm telling the truth. There must always be a limit. Otherwise, if there was no limit, people would be making babies during the day in the streets. You can't do so. There is a limit in whatever you do. How you expose yourself. It's not like what I saw, really. I just did not want to look at it. Knowing that it's being looked at by millions and millions of people in the world. It's almost like stripping off and standing there naked. So don't, let us not take some facts too far. 
it's just you know I, I always say this I, I, I went to Mexico one day I only le uh, last saw the Mexico in the pictures when I was a young boy looking at the Western Amakawa cowboys riding horses and, and the, I, I knew it was just a bioscope you know I went there and when I got in there were a lot of warnings don't move this way don't never go there why you won't come out violence here crime here I was a deputy president so I asked my colleague man I'm told I can't go to a number of places he says who oh, here don't listen to that advice I said by why I have not read about this tell me this man says no our media cannot sell <clears throat> Mexico negatively. Then they don't report about such. We must sell our country positively. I said to him, you know, don't have to go very far. I've heard you. Because I thought that, that was true. He started with the word that our media is patriotic. I think the media itself has got to look at itself. What I'm just saying now is my view. I don't think, and I've said this even to the media only, during violence, when we're dealing with violence in Guazulu Natal in particular, that you can't show a mutilated body. If I'm a brother of that person and I'm seeing him there on the newspapers, do you think I'm going to say shame? You even write who killed him. I'm going to stand up if I'm a man and go and take the space and kill him. So I said you are perpetuating violence in the manner in which you are reporting. We had booings getting into the top buildings in the United States. Not a single one here can say you saw one corpse. But the reporting was as effective as anything. It doesn't go so far. It just says something in our mind. You can report, but please respect other people. Respect the children. I know that these days kids are even made to kiss corpses, which was never happening in the past. It tells you times have moved. How would you handle that? Now, I'm, I'm speaking like this because I'm talking as a cater, as I said earlier. And don't quote me and say the state president said this. Say the cadre of the ANC said this, okay? Agreed? Hmm? <laughs> Speaking as a cadre. Because once I, I put the other head, I've got to be very responsible. Huh? I What? No, Ben Corn. President, Ute. Sell Tuli Hausler. Moti must be president of the ANC. Hmm? not of the state in any way I'm very happy as I said um, I, will, I will be able to deal with these matters when I've got the leaders church, everybody on, 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 on Wednesday I think <clears throat> I hope I don't I'm not announcing a wrong date I think it is a Wednesday because I think we need to talk about this we must change the psychology we never did we never did we thought everything was fine and fine. Our constitution will solve our problems. Uh, everything, <clears throat> Madiba will solve our problems. Others today say, well, we are messing Madiba's thing. I'm sure if Madiba is still alive, it will be like this. Because we should have done it at the beginning. All of us. We took things for granted. 